Hello. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Ask the Experts, the Nutrition Edition. My name is Elizabeth Irish, and I'll be your host today. I'm a registered dietitian with the New York State Office for the Aging and the snap -Ed Program Manager for our agency. Today, we're going to talk about sugars, and I have two amazing experts with me today. Tamara Elkin from the New York City Department for Aging and Beth McCarthy from Oswego County Office for the Aging. Both Beth and Tamara are registered dietitians and nutrition educators for the SNAPBED New York program in their region. They teach nutrition workshops in their area's SNAPBED agencies, and they teach eligible people over 60 years old. And NYSOFA has educators teaching SNAPBED workshops all over New York State. You can go to snapbednewyork.org to find out if we have workshops in your area. We're going to answer your questions later in the program, so be sure to start putting them in the chat. We can answer general questions, but we can't answer questions of a personal nature on our program. But we will get to as many questions as we can later on. So we're going to go over some general things. We're going to talk about some interesting things about sugars. And Alex, can you clue up the, cue up the slides? So we're going to talk about the sources of sugar in our diet first. Next slide. And talk about some basic information and facts about sugar. I'm gonna ask my experts to help me out here. So what do you think the most, the primary sources of sugar are in our diet? I would say sweetened beverages. Yeah, I think so too. And probably, do you think snacks or desserts or probably both? Probably both. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's also, it, it's complicated because it's hidden in so many things that don't necessarily taste sweet right off the bat. Sure. A lot of like dressing sauces and condiments mm -hmm. that, you know, don't taste innately sweet but actually are a pretty big source of added sugar. Yeah, so, sometimes people mistake, um, you know, something that's on the surface, you think, oh, that's healthy, like say a, a packet of oatmeal, but it has a significant amount of added sugar on, in it when you check out the label. And now that it's on the label, it's a lot easier to identify um, those sources. Yeah, that was a big policy win for us that now added sugar, included grams of added sugar has to be on the label. Even in things like salad dressing, you're like, oh, that's it. I'm going to be healthy for lunch, have a nice big salad. And the second ingredient can be high fructose corn syrup, right? You might as well just pour a cup of sugar onto your salad. <laughs> and here it says that the average daily intake of added sugars is 17 teaspoons per day for adults. Does that sound right to you guys? I think that's uh, undercutting it. Yeah, <laughs> especially if, like you had just referenced, if someone drinks sugary drinks, yeah, um, it's just so easy for those cal those uh, added sugars to pile in without you realizing. Um, yeah, I mean that alone then, come from one drink, right? And then you're gonna have lunch, and then you're gonna have dessert. Mm -hmm. It yeah. adds up fast. Yeah, and there's a recommendation here based on the dietary guidelines. <clears throat> so I guess they're saying to cut it back to no more than 12 teaspoons. And we'll talk about how you um, figure that out because that's a little bit of a challenge to understand what that means. Yeah, they, they love to put things in percentages and sometimes it makes it difficult for the consumer to understand what that means. Um, so, and at everyone's calorie needs are 2000 calories. So, you know, if, yeah. the pop, if, you're, if you're an older female, a little smaller, you know, you might be down to 12 or 1500 calories a day, which is going to drop that number. Um, yeah. So, and then they love it. So we showing it on the slide here, it's in calories. So if you want to change that to grams, if you're, you know, you're looking for a 1200 calorie a day limit, 120 calories would be 10%. And then you're going to drop that down to 30 grams of added sugar a day. So just like everything else in nutrition, how much you need of that particular nutrient or item or what's recommended is driven by your, your size and your needs. Right. It's not right. just 
magic number. I think yeah, also if, you look, um, if you're not a math person, which I don't judge you, I'm not either. It's just something we should try and limit, right? Exactly. Good, in good exactly. practice, it's something we can all be cognizant of and yes. pay attention to choose items with close to zero grams of added sugar when possible. Right. And that's what I do when I look at labels. I'm just looking for something reasonable as close to zero. And I, and I know I'm not going to get everything that's zero, but, you know, keeping it to a minimum. So if it adds up, it's not excessive. Right. Yeah. Yeah, Because in many cases, it, like you said earlier, it takes one can of soda, a uh, 12 ounce can, and that's 38 or 37. So there you go. So just, yeah. you know, if you just, if, if those items are in your, uh, daily diet, that's where you got to dig in. You know, if you're, if you're occasionally being once or twice a week, have a, a dessert, you're generally going to be okay. And when you look at the average number across the days, but mm -hmm. it's the daily intake, you know, if it's something you, you use or consume daily, it's going to add up. Yeah. Go oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just going to ask Alex to keep the slides up. Thank you. I was going to say, you know, sugar is also used in manufacturing as a preservative mm -hmm. and that it helps a lot of food stay, you know, fresher, longer. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, a lot of ultra processed or very processed foods have a lot of added sugar in them to contain, you know, to can, to continue keeping them fresher on the shelves longer. Yeah. It retards the growth of bacteria too. I think we'll go to the next slide, Alex. So here's some common things. We've talked about a lot of these already. Um, so, you know, I think we covered most of those just in generality. Maybe they eat breakfast cereals, you know, I think yeah. a lot of people don't realize even things like bran flakes or, you know, mm -hmm. things that are seemingly healthy could also actually be a big hidden source of added sugar. So it's just worth reading the label when you can. Yeah. Next slide, Alex. So people get confused sometimes. I'm sure they might be confused already, you know, by the things in the news. What is a natural source of sugar? What's an added source? And why do we care? You know? Yeah, until they add, until they put the line added sugar on products, a lot of people were confused because they would look at milk, for instance, and say, oh my goodness, it's loaded with sugar, but it was a natural sugar. So, um, you know, the, you have lactose and you have fructose from fruit and they're natural sugars and they're good. But at the same time, um, you know, the word sugar gets tossed around and it, it can get very, very confusing. Yeah, yeah I think I, those also as examples, the, the milk and yogurt, I think, are the most, <laughs> most think, alarming in terms of people trying to cut back on sugar. And they're like, whoa, my yogurt has a lot of sugar, yeah. even plain yogurt, right? But. The idea is that that's a naturally occurring sugar. That's not you know, the same thing as added sugar. Right. There's the sh total sugar in there, but part of like in a yogurt, some of it might be added and some of it might be natural, natural from the yogurt itself. And then added if they put, um, you know, fruit with sweetener in there or something like that. The fruit itself could be contributing natural sugars, but often they add it good amount of added sugar to that. Too. Right. I always say if you get a blueberry yogurt, it's not really blueberries floating around, <laughs> right? Maybe, Closer maybe to like jam or jelly. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the natural sugars, I guess, have a lot of um, nutrients coming in with them. And I guess that's why it's a difference. There's some nutrients yeah. listed here. Yeah, the, the biggest thing with the, you know, when people think of the added sugars is that there's, you're just, all you're getting is sugar and calories and you're not bringing anything with it. There's no, uh, like you say, the, the benefits just aren't there compared to the, you know, what you're going to get out of if you, if you're getting your sugar through fruit or milk, it brings all those other good things with it. Um, like we did the, the term empty calories has been around forever and that's yeah. kind of what all the sugar is. Right. If I'm eating a fruit roll up, I'm not getting any fiber or vitamin C or folate or anything. Right. Like that's something you really get from the fruit itself. Not a, not a processed fruit flavored snack. 
Right. Okay, I think we'll go to the next slide. So here's some names of different things that you might find on the label. This is a big list. Do you guys have any tips on how to remember, you know, what these things are on the label? Try and memorize what you can. <laughs> and try and look on the label for things that sound or may sound like sugar. You know, if it says corn syrup or high fructose corn syrup. Those are ones that we know. Any type of syrup, right? Brown rice, you know, mm -hmm. malt, barley syrup, things like that. You know, if it's a syrup, that's a safe word for, for sugar. Right. And not necessarily if it comes from, a lot of times I see like um, sugar cane juice or sugar cane um, sugars being advertised as healthy sources of sugar where they're very processed when something's a um, syrup, usually it's fairly processed. So there isn't any nutritional value. Yeah. Until they put the added sugar on the nutrition label, it was overwhelming yeah. for people because they were trying to pick through these things and find it. So, you know, it really is your best bet just to refer back because even some of the, what the generic name for uh, Splenda is sucralose. So people were looking for the OSES, the OSE at the end with that made it even more confusing now with some of those. So if yeah. you just see in on those, the added sugar line, you know, it's got one of these. Right, right. That's probably your best bet. So we'll go to the next slide. And there it is. let's see, yep, there's the label. So let's see. You can see there's a kind of a blow up there of sugars and added sugars. Right. So this is going to be under the total carbohydrate line. So that's where we would want to look. And then it splits it up into the different types of sugars. Mm -hmm. So it's actually really pretty clear to see how many grams of added sugar in a product that you're holding with the nutrition facts label. Yes. Yeah, so you wouldn't really be so concerned about the total sugars necessarily, particularly if it had, you know, a food in it like milk or fruit, some sort of, you know, it's the added sugars you would be zeroing in on because those are the non-nutritive sugars, right? Yeah, some products on the front side of the label are starting to add banners or marketing information with the term no added sugar um, to catch your attention. So just, you know, you verify it it's on the back too, but you'll see that on the front. Just have mm -hmm. to be aware that sometimes those products do have um, artificial sweeteners in them. And for right. some people, they want to, they, you know, that's, they, they don't want, they want to avoid those. So it's all right. personal preference. My husband complains when we go grocery shopping. I take so long because I look at all the labels and he's like, oh my <laughs> gosh, pick one. But I, I like to read everything. I like to know my facts and ingredients. It is eye opening. That's for sure. You know, even as a dietitian, they, sometimes you just, you're in a hurry, you make assumptions and then you, you look at it and it's, it's amazing. It is overwhelming for people though. You know, I say try to focus on, you know, one area at a time. Otherwise your grocery trips take hours and nobody wants to do that. Yeah, I'm fortunate. I don't do my grocery shopping. My partner does and he, <laughs> he knows I'm going to be looking at the label when he brings things home. So he's gotten pretty good at not bringing home things that are, you know, going to get rejected <laughs> or criticized. That's why you that. But yeah, he's getting there. <laughs> Can't say too much because, you know, then I'll be doing shopping. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I, 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 you know, I try to do it gently. Yeah. Well, and it's not to say that, it, you know, everybody, there's no, everybody eats added sugars, you know. Oh, of course. We're celebrating yeah. one birthday, you know, so I go, uh, you know, I never want people to feel like, you know, if it's, you, you're not, um, people will say, well, I, I don't want to cheat. I'm trying to avoid it. You know, you're not cheating. You, you plan and you just, you know, so, you know, drinking, I'd rather not drink a soda every day, but have a piece of cake or pie, you know, right. once or twice a week. So it's all just trade-offs really. It's just, you know, managing your own diet. Right. Exactly. Being true to real life, right? If you, as soon as you cut it out, as soon as that cake shows up, you're going to be like, whoa, I want three pieces now, exactly. right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Moderation is the way to go. Well, we're going to take a short break, and I just want to remind our guests and our viewers that we're going to be doing some questions later on. So stay tuned. 
We're just Hi, I'm Roger Noyes, Director of Communications for the New York State Office for the Aging. Please visit our YouTube channel today. Like and subscribe and you'll find all of this great content to support older adults, their caregivers, and people who love them. Please subscribe today. Okay, and now we're back. Let's continue our conversation about sugars. And don't forget, we will be answering questions later in the show. And I see we're gonna get some good ones. Just I've been peeking over there and we've had some, we have some good ones already. Okay, so next slide. Oh, here's some tips on how to avoid all that sugar we were talking about, the added sugars in drinks. <clears throat> And there's quite a few suggestions here. Do you have, are any of these things that you do or do you do something else to avoid added sugars in what you drink? I always have water with me. And sometimes I'll get bored of water. So I'll take seltzer or sparkling water mm -hmm. and I'll throw in if I have lemon or lime or a splash mm -hmm. of pomegranate juice, just something to, you know, switch it up because it's not always in the mood for water. I get that. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the, uh, you know, our workshops focus on uh, older adults in New York are mostly of the people that are in our audience. And many of them, uh, the word they choose to use is they hate water. <laughs> and, you know, I said today is definitely not an excuse because there's so many things you can drink um, that don't even, you know, doesn't automatically mean you have to drink something that's diet. There's so many other ways to flavor your drinks, um, you know, natural flavoring packets that are out there, you know, natural tea bags, you know, all sorts of things that you could put in your water um, so that it does have a flavor or a taste. Or, I mean, the seltzer that's out there now is unbelievable compared to just mm. a few years ago. That's become so, so popular. Yeah. Um, so there are there, there's so many alternatives to water. And technically it is all water. It's just flavored water. So. Yeah, I make in the summer, particularly, I make a great big pitcher of iced tea with a few tea bags. I make my own. I, you know, I put them in some boiling water and then add more water. And I grew up drinking unsweetened um, iced tea. So to me, that's, you know, just one of those things. And I can use decaf if I want to change the flavor. Sometimes I add like a cinnamon tea bag or a mint tea bag, you know, just to add a little bit of something else. Or you can grow your own mint and that's really good oh well, that'd be great with like a nice herbal yeah. tea no oh, yeah or something like that yeah. <laughs> especially that's today it's so nice so. Just, just to note i'm putting uh fruit you know throwing some you mm -hmm. know cucumbers and things like that in your water to the yes. audiences to make sure you're aware of, of you know how fast you're going to drink that water because you don't want that floating around for a couple days yes yes usually uh yeah after one day it's kind of shot so you don't want to overdo it don't don't set the goal so high and then you, you waste the water and the fruit. So. And, you know, my iced tea, I refrigerate because a lot of people don't think tea has to be refrigerated, but it, it does. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing I try to keep it nice and cold, too. Um, so, well, let's move on to the next slide. Oh, here's some actual recipes. So we were talking about putting cucumbers or... Um, this one has watermelon. Ooh, I would like that. Yeah, blend two cups of watermelon, two cups of water. That sounds yeah, very refreshing. Yeah, that makes enough for five, so you could share that. Yep. But you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to. <laughs> That's true. Let's see. Yeah, I, up, up until I taught it in a class, I, you know, full disclosure, never said cucumber water that it cannot be good but it actually is and it's a great way you buy a cucumber and you put it in a salad and then oh, i'm tired of this yeah you, know, you look in your fridge or use it up but it is good and it complements a lot of fruit i was uh pleasantly surprised when i finally went onto that side and tried it yeah, yeah this is a great way to um, use up that little extra something you have left over you know even a watermelon if you buy one and you're you know you're like well what else can i do with this you can make watermelon want cooler or you can make, you know, put a cucumber in with it too. I, we always, like you said, don't know what to do with the other half of the cucumber sometimes. I hate throwing them out right. if you forget about them. Right. 
not not very budget smart when you throw out half your cucumber. No, it's a great way to reuse, you know, and uh, make the most most of your groceries. Mm -hmm. Okay, next slide. Oh, here's a lot of ways you can avoid added sugar. Looks like a lot of them are ideas for fruit, which if you have a sweet tooth, that's the way to go. Poached pears mm -hmm. are always a fun one. Sometimes I'll make that with for dessert. And it's oh, a, really? a little bit of sweetness, but fruit based. So it's the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. We often will cut up fruit, like I'll cut up a banana and then add a squirt of um, whipped cream. You know, you're not adding a lot. It's mostly air. You know, if you let that melt, you can see exactly how much you're adding. It's like a tiny, tiny bit. And if you put a, one squirt on there, kind of tastes like banana cream pie to me. Or mm. I put a squirt on, uh, I don't even like bananas, to be honest. Um, but I like them that way. So well, sometimes kids, right? If that's what gets you to eat them, I'd rather yes. eat the banana. Exactly. <laughs> yep, exactly. That's what I do it. And we do strawberries. We'll cut them up. Any kind of fruit, really. Um, you know, a lot of people will say to me, you put, you use that whipped cream stuff. I'm like, yes, but you know, one can lasts like months. I have to keep checking the expiration date, you know, make sure that's still good. That's how, you know, long it lasts. You're really not getting very much right. when you just use a squirt. You know, some people will, um, for them to eat the fruit and to satisfy their, their, um, sweet tooth fix is they'll sprinkle a very small amount of sugar on there, but at least they're mm -hmm. controlling it. Yes. You know, half, half of a teaspoon, you're talking, that's a couple grams versus eating something, a candy bar. And, it, you know, if you feel like the fruit um, doesn't just quite cut it for you, like mm -hmm. you just said, if it gets you to eat the fruit and you're controlling the uh, amount of added sugar that's you're yep. putting in there, it's okay. You know, so for strawberries and raspberries, um, you know, you, you have to kind of work your way through it. You know, if you, if you're, eating a candy bar every day, you're not going to suddenly start just eating fruit every day. There's no way that's happening. So. Yeah. Small changes. Yeah, small. That, you know, trying to substitute that, you know, a couple times a week and then, you know, eventually decreasing the amount of the other kind of sweets. Okay. Next slide. Oh, well, we're at the end of the slides, but the, I think the big message here is, you know, sugars aren't equal, you know, added sugars are the ones that we try to limit. But, you know, many um, sugar containing foods like fruit and milk products have nutrients in them that we need. And, you know, so nutrition isn't black and white. It's, you know, knowing the details can tell you a lot of things. Yeah. And it's, it, you know, it's just a matter of every single person's what they consume every day is different. Everybody's unique in what they like and what, what they enjoy and just trying to figure out what tweaks and changes you're willing to make and what you, you know, you want to, you want to live with and what you want to be happy with. Um, it looks yeah. like better to, you know, make a small change than no change really. And that's really the key with, um, with, with sugar is, you know, it's, it's in our diet, it's in our life. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's around every corner now. So it's just a matter of what you can handle. I think yeah. the last two slides, you know, with this my plate and then the slide with the suggestions right before it, the idea is that if we put for, you know, put forward all the fruits and vegetables in the day that we're supposed to get, we might be filling up so that we don't have as much room to eat as much added sugar. So mm -hmm. we make sure we prioritize those. And then, you know, a little a little nibble or a little spoon is a, is all you need to get that craving out of the way when you're really filling up on the bulk of the fruits and the vegetables and the whole grains. Right. Yeah, whole grains and things like that make, when you eat a balanced <laughs> meal, a lot of times you're not looking for that sugar at the, you know, after your meal or mm -hmm. during, you know, in between looking right. for sugary snacks if you've eaten a balanced meal for the preview, you know, for yeah, lunch. Skip, skipping a meal often will set you up for that. And yes. that's the biggest problem. You, you, you then, then the, what, what you thought was you'll skip lunch and just have a snack that snacks <laughs> only has more sugar than you would have consumed if you had just eaten a regular lunch. Right. Exactly. So but snacks turns into snacks. 
<laughs> yes, the snacks add up to more than a meal more sometimes. More than a meal, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think we're going to go to our second break. And I just want to remind everyone that this program airs every second Friday at 1 p.m. So we're, like I said, we're going to take a brief break and we'll be back to answer questions. Hi, I'm registered dietitian Wendy Beckman, host of What's Cooking with Nysofa. Over the past two years, I've had the opportunity to share healthy, nutritious recipes with you on the show. I work for the New York State Office for the Aging, and thanks to a partnership with SnapEd New York, our nutrition team reaches hundreds of thousands of older New Yorkers each year. So why a cooking program? 60% of health costs and related issues have nothing to do with health, but instead have to do with individual behaviors like our food choices and physical activity. The recipes we feature are nutritionally appropriate for older adults, meeting critical nutrition requirements for healthy aging. What I bet you don't know is that this show is only part of a larger effort. To help me explain what our nutrition team at the New York State Office for the Aging does and what a registered dietitian is, here is registered dietitian Lisbeth Irish. A registered dietitian is a professional who has training and education in food and nutrition. To become an RD, you must complete certain requirements, including a minimum of a bachelor's degree from an institution that's accredited by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. You must also pass a national examination and meet continuing education requirements. What does that mean? As RDs, we are qualified to offer accurate advice about nutrition, and we can help answer your questions about how diet can affect your health. At NYSOFA, the registered dietitians handle many tasks. This includes hosting two online programs aimed at helping older New Yorkers make better nutrition choices. These programs are What's Cooking with NYSOFA, which is our monthly cooking demonstration, and a Facebook Live program that I host called Ask the Experts, Nutrition Edition. In the months ahead, be on your lookout for it. We'll be sharing your questions and our experts' answers about nutrition and health. New episodes of Ask the Experts Nutrition Edition debut the second Friday of each month on Facebook and YouTube. As Liz Beth explained, registered dietitians at NYSOFA handle many tasks, including food safety at congregate meal sites, educational materials, and outreach. In the meantime, please don't miss an episode of either show produced by our team, What's Cooking with NYSOFA and Ask the Experts Nutrition Edition. Every episode is uploaded to YouTube, and you'll find the archive shows there. Do you have a question about foods? Or do you have a particular health issue that you'd like to improve by changing your diet? Tune in to Ask the Experts Nutrition Edition every second Friday at 1 p.m. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, registered dietitians are the experts in nutrition. Visit for more sound advice about eating healthy on a budget. Hi, we're back. I just wanted to let people know that we are going to ask, answer some questions now. Now, if you have questions that were of a personal nature, we probably won't answer them today. But if you are 60 plus years old, you can reach out to your local office for the aging. Most local offices of the aging have registered dietitians who can meet with you individually. So we're going to go to our first questions. Can we receive copies of the PowerPoint? Well. All of our episodes are recorded, so you can go to um, YouTube and find this particular episode, and you can see the slides that way anytime you want. This person is an avid cyclist. Do I need sh sugar for power? No, that's a good question. So if someone is, uh, you know, cycling and you know you cycle generally for not just a few minutes it's a like a long process um you don't need sugar necessarily for the power you need carbohydrates protein and fat combined so you have energy for the entire ride um you know the, the whole thing of sugar giving you quick quick energy yeah it, it, sugar will be absorbed and digested faster you'll you'll you're, you'll get a quick bump but if you're cycling for a length of time, you want to make sure you are eating things that are have a combination of nutrients in them so that you have some staying power and long lasting energy, not just sugar for power at that point. You might eat something that has some added sugar in it, but certainly not, you know, you're not going to just be going for looking to eat added sugar. 
right, I many think times the, the added sugar versus the natural sugar again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have done studies that you really don't need to put more of a carbohydrate source. Most people would pick a sugar source because it's digested quickly, but you don't need that until you're doing something fairly intense for an hour. And then you might just need a little extra boost. But many athletes use bananas, for example, because that's a source of natural sugar mm -hmm. and potassium. Um, and that's, you know, the source that many athletes use. And you can drink water in addition to that throughout your cycling. Um, good information from Elaine Eitzer. Diabetics have to be aware of foods that contain sugar. Yeah, so we're lucky that now, you know, with all the policy that changed and we have it on the label, it's uh, mandated to have included grams of added sugar. So it's just a matter of turning over the label, paying attention and looking for that line. And you can also, you know, do your due diligence and read the ingredients list. And, uh, we, you know, we reference different names for sugar. So it's just good to familiarize yourself that it's not always going to say cane sugar or sugar, right? It could be called something else. Also, also too, um, just reiterating with the label is the critical piece of reading that label is the how many servings per container and the size of that mm -hmm. serving, especially if it's something that does have added sugar it's sometimes pretty easy to eat the whole container. <laughs> so you just want to be aware of what the portions is, you know, how many grams you're getting per, uh, per that container as well as each serving. Yeah. Your serving uh, may be a, you know, your portion may be several of the servings that are listed on the label. You know, if it says a half a cup, but you're going to eat two cups, you just have four times the amount that's listed on the, the label. So I do want to mention that I'm a certified diabetes education um, and care specialist, and it's good to meet individually with a registered dietitian um, to talk about your diet, because often you can work out the amount of sugar in your diet by talking about the total grams of carbohydrate in your diet and how to distribute them out over the day. You can learn a lot about how you should eat from a registered dietitian because most of us are very experienced in helping people with diabetes manage their diets. And if you're over 65 and you have Medicare, Medicare covers um, medical nutrition therapy and also diabetes education. So you want to talk to your primary doctor about that. So Karen Aikman says, is raw blue agave syrup healthier than honey? I use it on my unsweetened Greek yogurt. So I'll say, you know, when it comes to agave, yes, it comes from a plant. But when I go and open my agave bottle, it's not like the plant is coming out, right? <laughs> it uh, has to go through a few steps before it gets into the bottle on the shelf in your supermarket. So just something to remember that it is a refined added sugar. So, you know, just something to be cautious of. And Barbara Ivanoff, do, rec do we recommend the meal flavorings for adding to water? Are you familiar with those? I'm not, but I think I would do the same thing is if anyone asked, I would go look at the label. I'd see what flavorings <laughs> are in there, what sugar if there's added sugar, if it's an artificial sweetener, and if it has any of them, I'd probably see if I could create it at home myself. If it was a, you know, a citrus essence, I'd see if I could just squeeze in some fresh, you know, orange or grapefruit into some sparkling water and enhance it on my own. Mm -hmm. Probably also save some money. I'm familiar with those and I have used them. I think the great thing about some of those little things you squeeze into water is you don't have to put very much in. <laughs> you can really control the amount. You know, you can use a, just a drop to just give the water some flavor. You don't have to use a whole squeeze. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can control that and it's, you know, it's fine to use, but, you know, as Tamar was saying, there's a lot of things you can do yourself at home that probably are less expensive and may actually be more satisfying. 
Well, it's the same thing with the whipped cream, right? Like if that's what it takes for you to get to yes. drink water, I'd right. add a drop and hope that right. you know, exactly. it's not really long. Yeah, better to drink the water. It's probably not a secret, but I I grew up not drinking much water. I think I tell everybody that. So it's a little challenging for me. So I, I use a variety of methods to make sure I get in enough fluids. So let's see if we have any other questions. I'm waiting for one. Does sugar make you gain weight? If you eat too many apples, you could gain weight. So you have to look at it in the terms of sugar itself contributes to weight gain a lot because it's so easy to eat so many extra calories um, when you eat sugar because it's just so concentrated. Um, so, and if you're trying to eat, you know, your normal healthy diet and then you pile a dessert on top that has a lot of added sugar, it's difficult not to gain weight. So sugar itself, um, you know, on the flip side, you could eat added sugar, but not gain weight at all. It's all kind of the big picture, how it fits into your diet. And if, if it pushes your calories that you take in too high, then it's going to uh, cause you to gain. Yeah, too many calories from any source. If you take in more fuel, which is what a calorie is, more than your body requires, your body stores those extra calories at fat in fat and it doesn't matter where they came from you know they if it's more than your body needs it says oh what am i supposed to do with these oh we'll put them in storage you know and you know so really you know it depends on how much compared to you know the rest of your diet yeah what does reduce sugar sugar-free and no added sugar mean on a label so I think reduced sugar is like reduced sodium, right? It means comparing to the original in, uh, ingredients, label, can, whatever it's coming in, it's going to have at least 25% less of the original recipe of sugar. But if the item had, a, the original item had a ton of sugar in it, 25% less, is it really going to be? <laughs> if it had 100 grams. <laughs> And it brought it down to 75. Yeah, you're still yeah, getting ooh. a lot. Yeah. 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 And that's why it is good to look at not just the front of the package, but the yeah. back of the package. Exactly. That a lot of, you know, that they're trying to sell that item bottom line. That's why they're putting that stuff on there. It's, it's just a commercial that you're looking at before you buy it. Yeah. Is it okay to eat all the fruit you want since the sugar is not an added sugar? Well, I think Peggy. Uh, not Peggy, I'm sorry, <laughs> Beth, um, can answer that. You know, if you eat a ton of fruit and it's more than you need. Yeah, I think also in that case, you know, if you're eating the five apples a day, you're not really leaving enough room for the protein mm -hmm. and the whole grains and the vegetables that we need yeah. also. We don't want that to be the only thing that you're eating. Yeah, right. that's true. Yeah. You go back to the plate. It's it's all it's just all a matter of uh, balance, and you know not balance at every single meal, but balance throughout the day. Yeah. And fruit, you want to eat fruit, but you can eat too much fruit if it's you know mm -hmm. it, it's it's easy to do for some of the fruits because they are sweet and they are uh, real tasty. So. Yeah, I find that a lot with mangoes. Once I start, it's hard hard to put them down. I think with watermelon, a lot of people have a hard time. Um, stopping with that too, because we tend to serve it in very large portions. Yeah, grapes, watermelon, when you, go. When you buy one, it's huge. So, you know, you're trying to use it up. So I think the key there is share. <laughs> yeah. Do lemon cut down the sugar in a food or drink? That's from Willa Mae Martin. I wish. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> that would be, that would be a good cure-all. Uh, unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, in terms of like food science, it'll change, you know, the, the flavor of the sweetness. Mm -hmm. It could enhance it or it could tone it down. But that's still that same amount of sugar is still going to be in there with a nice lemon flavor. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I think a lot of people think that grapefruit is less sugar in it than, say, you know, something else. But because it's sour, um, 
but it's half a grapefruit is still a serving of fruit, just about the same as a small to medium apple. Yeah, that's a good point that the flavor doesn't, you know, can mask the sugar. And that happens in a lot of products yeah. where you don't even necessarily taste the sweet, you taste the flavor of the product and then you don't realize how much uh, added sugar is in it. Exactly. Sometimes when something's very salty, they uh, it can also be very sweet, but you won't taste the sweetness mm -hmm. because the salt overpowers yeah. the flavor. So you really do have to check those labels. I think that's, you know, in salad dressing, sometimes that's the case. Yeah. And it's all about if you use a lot of salad dressing, that's a that's an issue. But if you don't use much, then it's really an issue. Really it's comes down to moderation again, huh? Yeah. Yes. Moderation and variety. I think I always say those are the two key words in nutrition. The foundation. And let's yeah, and see. Think, oh, go ahead. With uh, added sugar. You know, if you're trying, if you if you're concerned about you know what your weight is and what you're consuming, is I always say I'd much rather eat my calories than drink my calories. Um, <laughs> cutting too. out the and and especially where you, you know, if you want to eat a piece of pie, you what's the alternative? But if you want to have a drink and you drink soda, there is alter there are alternatives. So it's better to find alternatives for your sugar that you're drinking because it's hard to find harder to find alternatives that meet your taste standards, I should say, <laughs> a homemade blueberry pie. It's going to be hard to find a copycat of that that's going to be, you know, not have a lot of added sugar in it. But you can always uh, find drinks that are not yeah. having the added sugars. So that's a good place to cut back so that you can have that slice, small slice of pie and not, you know, and be, you know, it works into the big picture. Mm hmm well, I think we're going to wrap it up here. And I want to thank Beth and Tamar for sharing their expertise and time today. Thank you. They're great guest. And I hope they'll come back and help us out again. I want to thank our audience for sharing their thoughts and their questions. And we want to help you save time, save money, and eat healthy. So you want to learn about Snap Ed. It can make a difference in your life. For more information and to find your local program, you can visit Snap Ed New York. Dot org. This episode of Ask the Expert is funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, which is an equal opportunity provider. Don't forget to like and subscribe to NYSOFA's social media and join us on June 9th for, at 1 p.m. for another edition of Ask the Experts.